My name is Roger Berkowitz, and uh, welcome. We're here today to talk about Hannah Arendt's essay, What is Freedom? It was published in uh, this wonderful book, Between Past and Future. Um, interestingly enough and importantly, uh, um, it comes right after the essay, uh, What is Authority? Uh, which is an essay that um, really asks about the loss of authority in the modern world. Uh, and, and that is a, a, a damaging and important loss for Hannah Arendt, but it raises also an opportunity. Um, and at the end of the essay um, uh, on authority, she writes, for to live in a political realm with neither authority nor the concomitant awareness that the source of authority transcends power and those who are in power means to be confronted anew without the religious trust in a sacred beginning and without the protection of traditional and therefore self-evident standards of behavior by the elementary problems of human living together. It's a complex sentence, but what it means in short is when we can no longer rely on religion or tradition or the way things have always been as authority, which sets the limits on how we live together, when the guideposts and the banisters that we usually use to control our life have been lost, we're confronted anew with the problem of how human beings live together. That is the problem of freedom. And so the loss of authority means that we need more than ever to ask ourselves, what is freedom? And um, the, the, uh, the, the, the essay, What is Freedom?, uh, has sort of two beginning approaches to this, right? So one is a false beginning, and I just want to mention it quickly. Um, and she talks about the beginning that the question of freedom seems like a logical contradiction. Um, and that's because on the one hand, uh, of course, we are, are, are free. Freedom is self-evident. Um, we can raise our hands or move our mouth or do weird things. And there's a kind of freedom that we always have and we feel that we have. We're conscious that we're free and hence responsible beings. On the other hand, science uh, tells us that everything that is has a reason or a cause and that um, this causality is also a self-evident truth so that everything we do is in some sense determined or caused. And so there's this, as you all know, um, constant uh, antinomy, this question uh, of are we free or is freedom an illusion and everything we do is, is a kind of, of, of causality. Um, and Arendt sums this up on page 144 by saying, thought itself makes freedom disappear. Insofar as the more we think and analyze about the world and come up with reasons for things, we explain what happens and freedom disappears. Um, and, and this is for her uh, a, a dangerous uh, idea. But what she says is that um, all of this emerges because of a misunderstanding of what freedom is. Uh, it's a misunderstanding that understands freedom as an inner freedom, as a freedom of will, that whether I, when I move my hand or not, is that freedom or is that caused by some hundreds and hundreds of causal links that I can't maybe understand, but God could or some super machine might. Um, and what she says is that uh, freedom is not really about free will or inner freedom, the freedom of the mind. That is a modern invention. It's an invention that goes back to um, largely Christianity and Augustine um, and that it, we misunderstand freedom when we think of it that way. So what is freedom for her? Freedom for her is not inner freedom, it is political freedom. It is the freedom to be able to do things. It is the freedom to start something new. Freedom is the ability to act in ways that are new, surprising, unpredictable, different, human. And thus, um, 
the 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 key the key line where she explains this um, is when she says that um, freedom to be free and to act are the same. To be free means to be able to act, to do things surprising. And that's what it means also to be human for Hannah Arendt. Um, on page 145, she says that freedom is actually the reason that men live together in political organization at all. Without it, political life as such would be meaningless. The raison d'etre of politics is freedom and its field of experience is action. What does that mean? Freedom is the reason man live together, men and women live together in politics. Why is that? How does, you, how does that make sense? Well, because to be free means to act, to be able to start something new, to do something different. Well, what happens when you do something different? People look at you, people talk about you, and thus, you become an individual, you become distinctive, you become unique. Not only that, and they talk about you, your actions make you meaningful because you suddenly are someone whose actions matter in the world. So when she says that without freedom, political life would be meaningless, what she means is that without freedom, we would just go on doing what we do, acting, not acting, behaving in ways that are expected, and um, we would never be meaningful. We would never act in ways that people have to give and ascribe meaning to what we do. And for Hannah Arendt, that meaningfulness is at the heart of what human being is. So freedom, which makes us and allows us to be meaningful, um, is at the very, very center of what it means to be human for Hannah Arendt, which is why freedom is such a central and important idea in her work. Um, uh, much of the essay, I should just say, uh, is a little technical, and it's technical because she's trying to um, fight against this mainstream traditional idea of freedom as inner freedom, as freedom of the will. Um, and so, uh, throughout the essay, uh, she's giving examples of the way that uh, freedom of the will as an inner idea has emerged. Um, on page 145, she says that inner freedom is a retreat from the world where freedom was denied into the inwardness to which no other has access. What she means here is that um, when we feel unfree in the world, when we feel like we can't act and be meaningful, when we feel like we've lost that meaningfulness, freedom of the will gives us a sense of meaningfulness. Well, I can't be meaningful in the world because I'm poor or powerless or people won't listen to me. Well, I can have my own ideas. I can have freedom of the will and I can imagine myself to be free. And this is an idea she, she, she attributes both to Epictetus, um, who empowers inner freedom, uh, and also St. Paul. So she quotes St. Paul on page 160. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So Paul says, I can't always do what is good, but I can will it. And even though I can't do the good, my will is good enough. And, and so it's a kind of... Um, retreat from the difficulty of the world into a kind of power, a will to power. And this is, she thinks, is what leads to the Nietzschean idea of will to power, where we retreat from the world um, and find our power in ourselves internally. Whereas for Arendt, freedom is never an internal power. It is a power externally to act in ways that make you be noticed and there's be meaningful. Hannah Arendt sees the threat to political freedom today uh, to be, on the one hand, the misunderstanding of freedom as an internal attribute, freedom of the will. Because insofar as we focus on freedom of the will and not freedom to act, 
we retreat from the world into ourselves and lose our freedom. Um, to the extent that liberal politics, beginning with Hobbes, uh, imagines safety and security as the highest values, um, that contributes to the retreat inward because to act in public is dangerous. It takes courage. So she says that courage is the highest uh, and most indispensable uh, political virtue. She says on page 155, it requires courage even to leave the protective security of our four walls and enter the public realm, not because of particular dangers which may lie in wait for us, but because we've arrived in a realm where the concern for life has lost its validity. Courage liberates men from their worry about life for the freedom of the world. Courage is indispensable because in politics, not life, but the world is at stake. So it is the lack of courage, the desire for safety and security that is at the center of the liberal Habesian universe that encourages men to see freedom not as a outwardly action in politics, but as an inward power. And then the third uh, real danger that contributes to the reduction of political freedom today is not from Christianity and philosophy and not from Habesian liberalism, but from the social sciences. The social sciences have widened the breach between freedom and politics. For government, which since the beginning of the modern age had been identified with the total domain of the political, was now considered to be the appointed protector, not so much of freedom as the life process, the interests of society and its individuals. Government begins to be governed by social science, by economics, sciences of governments, political science, social science, which tries to um, make life more safe, more secure, more comfortable, more happy. And in doing so, regularizes life, tries to find norms, laws uh, that will control uh, human behavior. And in doing that, um, uh, uh, regulate uh, human behavior. And that, for Hannah Arendt, um, is another danger to the understanding of freedom as a courageous political act. And so she says on pages um, 145 and 149 that the entire essay is an effort to reflect on the truism that the raison d'etre of politics is freedom and its field of experience is action. We need to return ourselves to thinking that politics is about courageous action that distinguishes us that starts things anew, that creates meaning and not simply um, seeks security and safety. And this returns us to this quote, which I'm suggesting to you is the center of the essay, to be free and to act are the same. Freedom is not acting under the guidance of the intellect. I don't act with an intellect that guides my will. Freedom is not acting under the dictate of the will. I don't will something and then act freely. Freedom is the acting that actualizes a principle. And she makes this distinction between a principle and a, and a dictate of the will. A dictate of the will is something I give myself, thus it's an individual power. Whereas a principle is something external, something like honor or glory or virtue or love of equality. And it's this performative act in the service of manifesting equality, justice, love, honor in the world through political action that Arendt understands freedom to exist, which is why freedom is a performative act. And I'll end uh, talking about this. She says on page 152, the performing arts have indeed a strong affinity with politics. Performing artists, Dancers, play actors, musicians, and the like need an audience to show their virtuosity, just as acting men need the presence of others before whom they can appear. Both need a publicly organized space for their work, and both depend upon others for the performance itself. 
In other words, freedom is a performance. It's an action in the world that people will see. And if it's free enough, which means surprising, unexpected, people will talk about it and respond to it, clap for it, boo, uh, punish you or build a statue to honor you. In other words, freedom are acts that are meaningful, good or bad, that help in the meaningful activity of trying to figure out how to live together as human beings in this complicated, messy world without authority. And that is what freedom is. I hope you enjoy reading What is Freedom by Hannah Arendt.